Hey folks, welcome once again to the insider's view of building your data center one DSE resource at a time. I'm Jason Helmick with Pluralsight and for this particular resource, I'm joined once again by, you've heard me say it before, my superhero on the PowerShell team, Heeman. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Now, before we get to your resource, why don't you take a minute and tell everybody who you are and what you do on the PowerShell team? My, um, I'm a senior program manager on PowerShell team and uh, I've been working on PowerShell uh, for the last nine years on various features, whether it was remoting or workflows or PowerShell APIs uh, for people to host PowerShell. And recently I've been working uh, on desired state configuration. And a lot of the work that you've been doing on desired state configuration has been in the form of making some of these first resources for us to be able to work with. Right. And if anybody who's been watching this uh, uh, series knows, you've been here a few times. Um, yep. And so we've talked about X DHCP server, we've talked about X Active Directory. We would be remiss though, if we did not also talk about the resource that you're gonna go in and shoot now, which is X DNS server. Yes. So I know what a DNS server is. What's the point though, to having a resource for X DNS server? Um, anytime you stand up an environment, if you have a DHCP, you have a domain, you need the domain name resolution. You want to say, I don't want to type always 192, 168, 127. You want to associate machines with the name and the domain. And that's where the DNS uh, server comes into play. And your creation of the resource, was this to make it for lab environments or was this for businesses to be able to build additional DNS uh, servers as they needed kind of thing? So uh, this one was specifically on a lab environment and uh, uh, a specific scenario we were trying to do. So that, DNS server module is very limited in scope of what it can do, and it's not the typical stuff people do with DNS servers. Uh, but given these resources exist on GitHub and community can contribute, you would see when you play with it that people have started adding new functionality like creating DNS A record. So if you have a DNS server, you want to create specific records there, you can use those, and that's been an addition from the community. You know, I'm really glad you brought that up, is that, um, and I know you and Don will, will be talking about this as well, is having these resources up on GitHub, uh, GitHub having the community contribute to it, uh, helps expand them, but when you created this for the lab environments, what functionality did you give right. it? Uh, so, for the lab environment, we had a specific scenario of having two DNS servers talk to each other so that you can resolve a name from one uh, domain to another without copying all the information. So essentially there are two resources, one which says, I, as a DNS server, allow other person, people to get the records from the DNS server. And the second is, once I can get records from another DNS server, I want to make that a secondary DNS server so I can resolve addresses in two different domains from a single. Much more efficiently. So what, right. what you're saying is if I can get the records from there, why don't I just go ahead and make a secondary, right. do the zone transfer and Boom. Boom. Have it local so I don't have to keep crossing the wire to get to it. Exactly. Well, that's cool. And and if you look at the safe harbor scenario that we were trying to use, uh, there you, you assume one ad environment is breached. So you don't want to go in that environment and do anything because you don't know what kind of code you're running. Is it a trusted code or not? Once the environment is breached, then everything is off limit. So the name resolution, if you trust, you want to allow people to say, hey, I can do name resolution, so if the requests are coming in, I know I can authenticate or what areas I want to allow people to go and uh, allow access to the new environment. You know, you, you mentioned Safe Harbor, and also with the X Active Directory, that was part of one of the scenarios you were thinking about with, with Safe Harbor and, and bringing this information across. So these kind of resources, uh, the X DHCP server, Active Directory, the DNS yes. server, this is kind of like a package almost, right? right. And, and a lot of places they go hand in hand. If you try to create a VM in Azure or in a Hyper-V, you'll always end up playing with the networking things if you don't have the DHCP and DNS set properly. Right. And that was the entire intent. So if you uh, if you have followed or you go and search for the safe harbor on PowerShell blog, it explains the entire architecture, how it, what we are trying to accomplish, how we do it. And under the covers, it uses all these DHCP resources to make it happen smoothly for the people to play and experience. Well, you know, I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you're you're going to demonstrate this. Do, are you going to demonstrate actually the, the, the DNS servers and making one and all that kind of stuff? Yes, so we, we essentially assume that the, you have two domains already set up which are running their own DNS servers, 
and then how do we do cross link with, between them and okay. copy the data over? Oh, this is going to this is going to be very exciting. I'm really looking forward to the interview you're doing with Don Jones. Thanks for taking the time. Sure. Hey, folks, make sure that you go out and you watch the XDNS server. DSC resource, and thanks for joining us. Look forward to seeing you again. Don't miss building your data center with DSC resources.